Welcome back to NH Unscripted, where Amos Moses was a Cajun. Yes, sir. Lived by himself in the swamp. I am your Jerry Reed-like host, Ray Dudley. My God, this rain, if it doesn't stop, I'm going to have alligators in my basement. Mother of God. We are coming to you from the almost totally submerged digs of the WKXL studios in Concord. Break out the Sony Walkmans, plural, I guess. It's, I always stumble with that at my age. And get rid of, take the cassette tape out and turn on that uh, radio band. You will find us at 14. 1550 AM, 103.9 FM. Those are Concord based. And 101.9 FM. You know why? Because we love you beautiful people in Manchester. Yes, sir. We even have a URL because we are one of the cool kids. NHTalkRadio.com is our URL. I will give you more information on what's happening out there a little bit later in the program. Right now, I need to thank my sponsor, Lakes Region Fence. LRFence.com is Lakes Region Fence's URL. If you go out there, you can get a free estimate on a brand new fence. Come on, Mother's Day's coming up. Get rid of that piece of trash you got out there. Come on, well, you know, the neighbors walk by and they're always disparaging your house because you got the dumpiest fence on the block. That's why you don't get invited to all the parties. You know it. I know it. Everyone knows it because your fence is terrible. Mother's Day, go out there, LRFence.com, LRFence.com. Look around. They get reams and reams and reams of all the great work they've done. And trust me, I've been on some of their uh, job sites. They do incredible work. You need a pickleball court? How's your property line? You know, they do it all. You need a pool fence? Go to LRFence.com. Matt and his guys out there do it all, and they do it really well. They don't use that big box store junk. They actually use high-quality materials. I love their work. I really do. And I appreciate all that they do for NH Unscripted. Well, today will be an interesting day. I have a couple of things to cover, and um, I want to encourage you to get out of the house and go see some theater. I really do. Probably by the time you hear this, because of the scheduling and stuff, you may not get to see some of the shows I'm going to talk about on today's program. But that's not the point. The point is that there's a lot of things going on out there. Go out. Support our local actors. Hey, your cousin could be in the show. Get out. Go see them. I mean, just recently, what was the name of your show, Andrew, that you had up there? Something about death. Uh, getting Away with Murder. There, there, so. there you go. Getting Away with Murder. And did you run for two weekends up there? Yeah, we did. Yep. That, okay. uh, last weekend in April and the first weekend of May. Is that typical for Pittsfield, two weekends? Uh, yeah, typically. Yeah. A lot of, uh, I know a lot of um, community theater productions are not two weekends. Most shows, I feel, should be two weekends. I, I feel like you just don't get that. enough opportunities with one. It's true. I agree with you a lot. Folks, look, if you are even thinking at all about ever setting foot on a stage, check out your local community theater groups, Pittsfield, Community Players of Concord, go up there to a powerhouse theater up in Laconia. Just, you could be a treat. Yeah. You could be a tree. You know, like you see on TV, the little kids, they got they, they dress up as the tree or the blade of grass. Or what. Yeah, go do it. Try it out. See if you like it. Um, I know that coming up uh, this weekend, I think, is Tuck Everlasting up in uh, for the Powerhouse Theater in uh, Laconia. Oh, dude, they, they perform at the newly renovated Colonial Theater in downtown Laconia. Have you been in there, Andrew? Yeah, I know you have. Oh, I've I've been in there a few times. Yeah, yeah, I bet yeah. you have. It's a gorgeous theater. <laughs> it is. It's a, it's a beautiful space. I they spent millions of dollars renovating that thing. Mm. I mean, it it's not much space for dressing rooms. <laughs> You're in some guy's office trying to change, but <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I've been in I've been in worse. Oh, you have, huh? Oh, yeah. Huh. We'll yeah. save that for another show. Yeah, thanks. I appreciate that. Tuck Everlasting is taking place up there. It's going to be a great show. It's a take on, of course, um, Tuck. <laughs> what is it a take on? So it's based on a storybook. Thank you. Um, it, it was also a Disney film. 
It was? Um, it was, yes. It was a Disney film featuring uh, William Hurt, I believe, was the father. Wait, are you serious? Yep. Dang, man. I yep. no the, the show is a little bit different. Um, a lot of music, lots of dancing. Um, it's a great family piece. Yeah, I'm going this weekend. Are you going to go? Uh, Putting you on be, the spot here, To brother. be determined. Oh, I see. I see. I may show up. I may not. Huh. Huh. Depends on if I can f- free myself this weekend. I see. I see. Well, I'm going to go. I have my ticket already. Um, I do know that they are also, they just held auditions for Fiddler on the Roof. I was talking to Kat about that. Mm-hmm. She went up and auditioned up there. Um, these are shows, the shows like Fiddler, Christmas Carol, some of, uh, they like to do large cast shows up there. They truly are community theater oriented. Folks, I think uh, Community Plays of Concord just finished Pride and Prejudice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know how that went. I haven't talked to anybody there. Another, but my understanding is it was a little bit different take as well on that uh, show. Folks, go out. These places are just, they love new people. They thrive on new people. Fresh Blood in a community theater organization. I'm telling you, they, it, it's, it's hugely important, hugely important. And there's no, don't worry about if you're too young, too old, too whatever. They'll, they'll take you. They will warmly embrace you up there. Pittsfield is having a, an evening of one acts. Um, that's coming up. When is that? Did they already do that? April 28th. They to just had auditions for that. So that's, yeah, they have, they've just barely started their process. Oh, uh, okay. So that's going up in June. Yes. Did they... Did they get a decent turnout? Have you heard? I believe so. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I can't even imagine what that's about. Is that is that they actually is that written by local people or are those actual one act plays? That I think gone they're out just and, a series of one act plays. Got you, got you, got you. Speaking of powerhouse earlier, um, I know that they are having a festival, not one act kind of thing. They call it a spring festival where. Um, the plays are written by local people, performed by local people, directed by local people, and uh, that will take place June 1st and 2nd. That is up at Prescott Farms, up in the Laconia, Meredith-ish area. I will be a part of that if anybody wants to see the beautiful face behind the microphone. Come on out for that. It is, that's going to be, that's a two-day event. And I think we're going to end up performing one, two, at least three times. Speaking of events. Yes. You, I believe, just went to an event not too long ago. Funny that you mentioned that. I did. So. It was a unique one for you, too. (laughs) Yeah. Fish out of water warning coming up. On April 28th, um, there was New Hampshire Opera Idol. And that took place over at the Bank of New Hampshire stage, the Canton Room in particular. And I was invited to go attend. And I did. And so, folks, uh, if you've heard this show at any time previously, opera would not come to your mind. I guarantee you, you would not be thinking, huh, Ray should go to something like opera. Because he would be really good. He he would fit right in. Eh, not happening. But it was incredible. As a matter of fact, it's kind of a short little segue here. Andrew, I didn't tell you. I did tell Kat earlier. Her mom, Jane Cormier, has just about got me hooked on Arts for Living. Um, she did some post-interviews with a lot of the contestants. And she did some pre-interviews too. <laughs> I haven't heard those. Oh yeah, no, they're all on the website. Uh, oh, <laughs> which would be <laughs> funny you mentioned the website nhtalkradio.com. What another chance to put that out there? But I have been listening to some of the post interviews. Now I know literally I know nothing about opera. I mean, I, I told Kat earlier the earliest the, the 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 closest thing to opera minus Elmer Fudd would be I, I in high school. The Mikado. I'm familiar with the Mikado, which Kat quickly chastised me for and said it was an operette, not to be confused with opera. But hey, what do I know? I was young then. I'm old now. What do I know? But anyway, so I show up at the New Hampshire Opera Idol, and um, it was it was unbelievable. I don't know what I really expected, but it was beautiful. It was a a very intimate setting. Would you call it intimate, Andrew? 
I would say so, yeah. And it, it allowed for us to really like listen and, and feel Yeah. Um you know, the emotions and the pieces in, in a in a close up way. I, I actually enjoyed it a lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I I was at first a little bit con, uh concerned about the uh oh oh Hey Hey What do you know? Talking New Hampshire Opera Idol and huh, time to put on my dancing shoes. We gotta dance on out and take a break. You are listening to NH Unscripted Opera Edition. Yeah, that ain't happening very often. I am your opera-like host, Ray Dudley. We are coming to you from the YMCA-like conditions of the WKXL Studios in Concord. 1450 AM, 103.9 FM. And the beautiful people in Manchester can find us at 101.9 FM. Our URL is nhtalkradio.com. I'm doing opera today. Welcome aboard. We'll be right back. When you hot, you hot. Yeah, thanks a lot. You are listening to NH Unscripted. I am your Jerry Reed-like host, Ray Dudley, and we are coming to you from the Taj Mahal-like digs of the WKXL Studios. Almost underwater, all this April rain. Hopefully it's going to bring some May flowers. You are listening to us, on, I hope, on 1450 AM or 103.9 FM in Concord. 101.9 FM in Manchester for the beautiful, beautiful souls down there. NHTalkRadio.com is our URL. And we today we are going a little bit off track for what I normally do, but um, I had the chance on April 28th to go to the Bank of New Hampshire stage, the Canton Room, and see some opera. And it, it I don't want to say it changed my life, but it certainly opened up my eyes to certain things. You know, you can get very myopic in life. Very, very myopic, very easily. And having the chance to go see opera, which I would probably not normally have done had I not been a host here and uh, WKXL was uh, sponsoring the event, I would not have gone. But um, let me tell you something. I was incredibly impressed. Incredibly. And I'm so glad that they kind of did it in, in the Canton room over there because um, the intimacy, I think, added a, another level to what was happening in bringing the audience into it. And um, there were 11 uh, finalists over there. I could not tell you one name of any of them, but these young folks were spectacular, very professional, very good at what they've done. And... Uh, I, I I can't I can't even begin. He, some of it was in obviously in a different language, French, German, Italian. I had no idea what they were saying most of the time. But opera is so different than theater. And I love theater. And this show talks a lot about theater and the mechanics of theater. Opera is not just on another level. I mean, literally, what they have to do. Because in normally in theater, you get a script and you can read through that script, become that character. And as you read the script, you know, you can put in inflections and pauses and grunts and groans and sighs and laughs and smiles and whatever. Kind of massage it to, to fit what you think that character is about. But I was talking with Cat upstairs who informed me, rightfully so, that the opera performers... They don't have that option. They have to abide by the musicality of the of what they're doing, and that sort of adds a layer, a f- another layer. I would call it restricting, but I think in some ways it's very liberating because they it's written a certain way. The music you can't just stop and pause like you would in well, I would <laughs> in in theater um, and embellish it if that's a, a way. So they have to perform, add, adding emotions to musicality. I, okay, it's off the charts. I am, it's beyond me, obviously. But 
it's darn impressive. Darn impressive to see all these women in their beautiful gowns, the gentlemen all in their tuxedos or their, their dressed up uh, suit attire and performing for these uh, for these people and for prizes. I will find out in a moment about actually um, what the winning prizes were and who they went to. But um, they handed me a microphone when I walked in and said to me, hey, Ray, can you go and interview people? I'm like, what? What am I doing? I just got out of bed. <laughs> this fat old man just walked across the street from the parking garage. And what am I supposed to do here? But they were kind enough. They had faith in me, as my wife does, and said, can you please go interview some people in the, uh, in the audience or in the building? So we have some of those for you today. And um, the first one up is actually Jane Cormier. Jane, she pretty much produced the whole crazy event. She was invested. She um, was involved in the selection process, the weaning down of the contestants, so to speak. And, um, and, well, why don't we let her uh, speak for herself? Andrew Baby, if you don't mind. This is Ray Dudley with NH Unscripted, radio host WKXL. We are at New Hampshire Opera Idol, and I am talking with... Jane Cormier, Art for Living host here at WKXL. Ooh, what a small world. <laughs> Jane, what is your role here? So I was the person that put this together for the station. Um, as director for Piccolo Opera, we probably had 28 years where we did this event. When Piccolo Opera closed a couple of years ago, there wasn't any New Hampshire Opera Idol. So I decided to ask uh, Catherine if WKXL might want to take it up. And now here we are. 28 years? The Piccolo was where? Piccolo was right here in Concord. In, and uh, we... We had a lot of wonderful years of performance, um, basically offering emerging opera singers the opportunity to get on stage and learn their craft. So um, it was a great ride, uh, but like most nonprofits, uh, we weathered through COVID, but after COVID, um, the board and I decided that maybe it was time to, you know, say goodbye. So what would you think, how would I, someone like myself, gauge the hunger or, or or uh, appetite for opera in New Hampshire? So the, the sad truth is, is selling an intangible in New Hampshire is tough. And opera is more intangible um, because a lot of people don't know about it. They have this idea that because it's in a foreign language and, you know, it's European, it's a European art form that they'd never understand it. But we find that the more that people have a little bit of um, education about what it is, mm -hmm. we, we have followers, and this happened in all the companies I ever worked with, followers just grew because they're less afraid of it. They're not intimidated by it. So that's what Opera Idol is about. It, we're having it here in a, in a really a cocktail uh, you know, arena, right? right? People can have a drink and listen to a little bit of opera to see if they like it. And then maybe if they do, they'll, they'll, they'll see if they can sit through a full opera. Who knows, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so what should people expect today? What, what, what's the uh, overall flow of the night mm -hmm. going to be or afternoon? So right now we have 11 finalists that have made it um, through a, a pool of singers that competed the last couple of months. They're coming from all over the country. And they will sing one aria for the audience. The audience will actually be able to have a vote in who wins today. The winner's uh, first place is 750, second is 500, and third place is 250. Plus we're giving contracts for the opera I Pagliacci, which I will be presenting with um, Pitts, Pitts, Pittsfield players in July. So they get, they get a little bit of, you know, they can take some money home or they might get a contract. So when you said the audience is going to select the winner. What's the criteria, do you think? From It's very subjective, or no, is there is an so actual... They, everybody has a ballot, and on the ballot, which I will explain before we start, the audience will, will listen to voice quality, good diction, communication, and musicianship. And uh, then they'll give it a number. We'll tally all the numbers. We'll find out who the, the three winners were for the audience, and that's one vote. Then there's my vote, and then there's Catherine, who is the... Um, the general manager here at WKXL, and she grew up in the opera world. So, um, yeah, that's how we're going to do it. And are they all weighted equally? They're all weighted equally. Okay. Correct. Okay. All right. Jane, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Oh, my goodness. It's going to be a
Well, 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 there you have it. Jane has a program here at uh, the studio called um, Artful Living. Art, what, <laughs> Artful Living, yes. Thank you, sir. Um, and I was listening, as I said earlier, to some of the uh, post interviews. And I, I'm telling you, it's fascinating. She has an excellent approach to her show, and especially interviewing these young people who uh, performed that day. And she kind of introduces a piece explains what you're about to hear, thankfully, for those of us who have no knowledge of opera, um, explains what you should be experiencing, how, you're, how you should um, accept it, and what, what the whole piece in general is about. And then she goes into speaking with these young people. I, it, I'm fascinated by it. I still can't understand any of it because it's in German. <laughs> but you know what? Hey, to each his own. It is... It is quite an experience. Um, that day, with the 11 people who showed up, um, and on Jane's uh, program, she gets more into the minutia of um, all the opera pieces that they went into. But each contestant would stand up and give a brief internet and say who they were, and then talk a little bit about the piece that they were about to do. It was fascinating fascinating oh my goodness gracious here i am trying to go through opera and i thought i I wouldn't even be able to do it but you are listening to nh unscripted dog it is a great day to be alive i am your opera soon to be loving host ray dudley and we are coming to you from the nearly underwater digs of the wkxl studios where it just never seems to stop raining 1450 AM, 103.9 FM. Those are Concord based. And for the beautiful people in Manchester, you know who you are. We love you down there. 101.9 FM. And nhtalkradio.com is our URL. I got my dancing shoes on. Going out to get me some fried bologna sandwiches on bulky rolls. Woohoo! I'll be right back. Hoist up the John B. Sales. You are listening to NH Unscripted. Mother of God, if we ever needed a boat, it's lately. I am your Beach Boys like host, Ray Dudley. We are coming to you from the waterlogged digs of the WKXL Studios in Concord. 1450 AM, 103.9 FM. Yeah, yeah, Concord based. Yep, 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 yep. 101.9 FM in Manchester because, simply because, you beautiful folks exist down there. NHTalkRadio.com is our URL. I might as well take a second here, tell you what's going on out there. If you go to NHTalkRadio.com, you there's a button out there where you can listen live. Yeah, yeah, any time of the day, just go press the button and you can hear what's playing. Or you, the, all, every program here at the studio is archived. And you go out to nhtalkradio.com. You can find an archive for every program on every time we've done it. And I think this show, almost a year old now, you can find every one of the beautiful interviews I've done. It's along with all the other programs here. Slim, Jane, whatever, are all out there. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Yeah, that, how's that for a radio? <laughs> Classy. Cough right into the microphone. Okay, so we are continuing with NH, um, New Hampshire Opera Idol. I did some interviews out there, um, which were just spectacular, spectacular. Award-winning, if I might add, <laughs> which in my own world they would be. We have one coming up with um, the mother of Tara Jam Shidian. She was a contestant there. Um, Andrew, if you've got that queued up, why don't we treat the audience? This is Ray Dudley, radio host WKXL for NH Unscripted. And anybody open to be interviewed? Come on. I just want, okay. And you are? Tara Jam Shidian's mother. Oh, I see. So you have a real horse in this race. Absolutely. Okay. So how, how familiar are you with opera? Pretty familiar now. 
because of her, because of her being an opera singer. So I've learned a lot. Where did she get her love for the opera? Um, her voice teacher. She wanted to be in musical theater. Mm -hmm. That was on the other interview with Jane. And um, her voice teacher said, you know, you probably can sing opera. And Tara didn't even know, like, oh, I have no interest in that. But then she started investigating in it, and she grew to love it. So, It's a world into itself, yes. right? Yes. I mean, it's almost underground. Yes, it really is. And I, I hope that, you know, we can get more people interested in it. Because when you really listen and you know what's going on, it's, like, amazing. I know it's in another language most of the time, but, you know. There's we need some culture. We need some culture around here. Sir, you are? I am Tara's father. <laughs> oh, so <laughs> I see, I see. What is your love for the opera? Oh, you familiar with it? I am familiar as much as I could be. Mine comes from Elmer Fudd, Doug's Bunny. <laughs> it's, as far, it's as far as I know. <laughs> so, oh, oh my God. So, what are you... What are you actually hoping to see, besides certain people win, what are you hoping to find out today? That everybody has a good time and enjoy it, such a beautiful day, and cherish these young voices. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That is the whole thing. Thank you very much. You mind being interviewed? It's okay, there's no trick questions. All right. So, your name? There you go. <laughs> I warned them not to give me a microphone, but they're like, hey, fat old man, hit it. Hit the streets. Go out there. Do it. Anyway, you know, I, I again want to reiterate the professionality of these kids, the professionalism of these young people. I shouldn't call them kids. They are to me. But it was just, it was something other people should emulate. They were proper. They were prepared they were ready. It was really a sight to see. Um, my hat's off to these people. It, it, I'm telling you, I was impressed. I think we have, do we have another one lined up here? Are we looking at Christopher? We are going to hear Christopher Belize. He's a supporter. And uh, take it away. This is Ray there. Dudley, WKXL radio host for NH Unscripted. We are at Hampshire Opera Idol, and we are speaking with Christopher Belize. Christopher, what brings you here today? I'm here to watch the competition and support my lovely girlfriend who is a soprano and singing in the competition. Oh, so no pressure to choose which one. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's going to be tough for me to choose, right? <laughs> so what are you hoping to see here today as far as competitive-wise? Well, I'm really looking forward to looking uh, to hearing all the different pieces. I'm really, I'm really excited for the Puccini and the Mozart as well because being a musician myself, not an opera singer, but being a musician, I'm really into, interested in just seeing all the different qualities that the singers will bring to the table today. It's going to be fun, and it's going to be really interesting. Have you heard a lot of these singers before? I have never heard any of the other singers here before, so we're I'm from the Midwest, and this is a very new experience for me to be out here and witness a, a whole group of singers that I've never seen. Oh, this should be very interesting. I'm very excited. Thank you. Thank you. As Christopher was naming certain pieces he was anxious to see, I think my eyes rolled back in my head because I realized, oh, I know nothing about this world. <laughs> and these beautiful people are here to, to uphold this art form, which I knew nothing about, but bless their hearts. I mean, he's rattling off what he's waiting to hear. I, okay, fish out of water, fish out of water. We have one more, I believe. Um, Jacob Nurek uh, is an interview uh, that it took place. Andrew, fire away, baby. This is Rady Dudley, WKXL. Radio host for NH Unscripted, and I'm speaking with uh, Jacob Nurek. Jacob, welcome. And Jacob, what is your connection today to this opera festival? Uh, my fiance is one of the performers. Ooh, so you have an inside track. Yes. I see, I see, I see. Um, I know that you're probably maybe persuaded a little bit, leaning towards certain people, but how would you rate the. I know you haven't heard, I don't think you have you heard all of these people before? Let's see. Uh, a few are a few uh, familiar names, uh, so I'm excited to hear how they've grown over the years, because my fiance has been part of this for a very long time, and 
it, we're all growing and changing, and it'll be great to see how well everyone does yeah. because we're here to support everyone. Right, right. So what would you say is the biggest barrier that a contestant has to overcome today? Hmm. The biggest barrier? I would say the biggest barrier would be... Um, the space itself, it's very intimate, mm -hmm. um, and some of these performers might be used to performing on a stage, and so it's just adapting their voice to the space, and uh, I'm sure that with the company pianist, uh, everyone will do a really great job. Yeah, I hadn't thought about that, so probably a lot of them are, are used to like throwing their voice out there to, for those big venues, being a much more intimate, literally a very intimate setting certainly changes the dynamic of the whole thing. Do you think that that will prove to be a, a huge challenge or, or a stepping stone for a lot of these folks? We'll just have to wait and see and hear yeah. these singers. Yeah, too. And you say you're familiar with some of them. Are you looking forward to any specific ones? Um, I'm specifically looking forward to, I, I love Mozart, so Kate Wood's uh, up there for me. Um, I, I see some uh, something from Little Women. I love, so Addison Patillo, and um, I love... My Darling Jim, the, 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 the flashback scene was performed by Juliet Morris. So that's, I'm very excited for that. Yeah, yeah. Thank you very much. I appreciate your input. Thanks. Well, I almost sound like I know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Andrew, do we have enough time to do uh, one more? I don't know what we're... Uh, we are at a minute and 57 seconds, so we probably want to wait till the next segment for that. Okay. Okay. Um, let me chat a little bit about, um, I'm going to quickly name the sponsors that I know of, and then I'm going to explain a little bit later in the last segment about each of these sponsors and their support. Avalok Farm Music Institute was uh, one of the sponsors. NH Writers Project, uh, I will give the website for all of these later. Uh, they were another sponsor. Concord TV, we love Concord TV. They were a sponsor of the show as well. Capital Center for the Arts was a sponsor as well. And all of those, um, I'm actually going to give you their websites and give you a little bit of information from each of their websites about those so you can get more familiar, especially some of them like Avalok Farm Music Institute, which many of us probably have not heard about because we're not in that subculture, which is opera. Um, when we come back, uh, not only will I be giving you information about those sponsors, but I will be giving you the winners of uh, the uh, New Hampshire Opera Idol. There were th actually four. There were three top prizes. There was a tie in there. And so um, they had to split one of the uh, gifts, one of the prizes for the night. We will go over that a little bit more. Tambourines and Elephants. Oh, playing in the band. I know it's not opera, but hey, it's Creedence Clearwater Revival. Love those folks. I am Ray Dudley, your host. You are listening to NH Unscripted Opera Version. Opera Idol, anyway. We are coming to you 1450 AM, 103.9 FM on your Sony Walkmans, 101.9 FM for the beautiful folks in Manchester. NHTalkRadio.com is our URL because we're just cool. We'll be back. Last segment coming up. This is Kenzie. Do the hell. Oh, you are listening to NH Unscripted. I am your Austin Powers like host, Ray Dudley, and we are venturing into a world I didn't know much about until a few weeks ago. You can find us 1450 AM, 103.9 FM, Concord based, of course, 101.9 FM for the beautiful, beautiful. Beautiful listeners in Manchester. NHTalkRadio.com is our URL where you can listen live or yeah, you get up 2, 3 in the morning and need something to listen to. The archives are all out there as well. We still have a couple of more uh, interviews that they had allowed me to do. And then if we can get into it, we may have something that Kat did. Next up on the interview list is Lisa Wood. And um, let's hear about it. Let's hear from Lisa, if you don't mind. 
This is Ray Dudley, WKXL radio host with NH Unscripted, and your name is? Lisa Wood. Lisa, why are you here today? My daughter, Kate Wood, is also a contestant in this. I see, I see. So that brings it closer to home. Um, How long has she been singing opera? About 16 years. She started when she was in high school with a voice teacher who was also in opera and um, developed her confidence and her proficiency and went to school, studied at Westminster in New Jersey, NEC in Boston, and now she's breaking out. Wow. So this competition, what, why do you think it's so important? Oh, well, it seems to be a lost art opera, and it needs some rejuvenation, and it's great to see um, the younger generation that is starting to embrace it. And people don't understand, I think they underestimate what it takes to be a great opera singer. There's an athleticism to it. There's the discipline. The You have to be a real student of music and certainly of opera. You've got the different languages. You need to be able to be a performer and actor. Of course. That's very interesting. I hadn't thought about all those layers of where not only do you need to know how to sing, but you, mm-hmm. the language barrier could be huge. Right. That's very, Yeah, yeah, yeah. How long? You said 16 years? Mm-hmm. And is she a New Hampshire native? She is not. She is a Boston resident right now. Oh, interesting. So did she, uh, when she came, so there aren't many like this. Are there uh, uh, competitions like this? No. I mean, there are many vocal competitions, but nothing specific. I mean, all the... All the formats are a little different. This is interesting. Yeah, why? What's different about this? Well, it's a very intimate environment, which yeah, is great. For sure. Um, it's a small body, and I think that the uh, attendees are going to be picking the winner, so that's that's not... Easy. It's a beautiful place. It is. I it mean, is beautiful. It's a remarkable place. It's Looking intimate. forward to... Yeah, it's like a little cabaret. Yeah. It's beautiful. Yeah. Thank you very much. Yes. And, by the way... Kate Wood, her daughter, actually did place in the top three. Let me give you those right now. Elizabeth Cohen uh, won first place, but placed first, however you want to phrase that. And I happened to have voted for her. What do you know? I was kind of surprised myself. Uh, Josephat Contreras placed second. Jessica Bell and Kate Wood tied for third place. That that was um, pretty impressive. Pretty impressive. D- Andrew, do you happen to have what um, the monetary prizes were? What did they win? First um, was seven fifty. I yes, I believe first was seven fifty. Um, I can't recall how much the second prize was, but yeah. the third prize was three hundred. That they split. Right? That they split between the two. And then the winner. Correctly. Wait, was there a separate winner for the Il Pagliacci? Did I get that? Was a separate list. Man, oh man, oh man! It was great. It was a beautiful. It was a beautiful afternoon. Um, I was concerned at one point about the acoustics, and I happened to stumble upon Allie from the Concord TV, and she was filming uh, that day the event, and uh, I think we have her interview queued up, Andrew. Sir, if you wouldn't mind, let's listen to Allie. This is Ray Dudley, WKXL radio host with NH Unscripted. We are at New Hampshire Opera Idol, and I'm speaking with... Allie. And Allie, what is your role here? So I'm working with Concord TV, and I'm filming the event. Oh, you are. Well, this is kind of a a reunion kind of thing. You guys are right down the street from us. Okay. You're at the uh, high school, right? Yes, exactly, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um... What is, have you run the camera before? Yes, I have. I'm a videographer, so I've worked with Conquer TV for about like two years, I think, two and a half, and I just film their events and edit some of them too. Does this particular venue uh, pose any specific issues you might have to overcome as opposed to like a music hall or something? Uh, yeah, so I've actually filmed here before, but at the other side of the venue, at the stage, but... Um, right here, um, everything seems to be fine. The lighting is a little tricky just because of the windows, but other than that, yeah. I think it should be good. Yeah. How about projection and sound? Is that an issue? Um, I believe not. I think it'll be fine. I have a microphone that's added to the camera, but I think it should be good. Oh, thank you so much. I appreciate your time. 
We love Concord TV. My gosh, if you have never been out to uh, see what they do out there, you are missing something. It is very community oriented, hence the community, Concord Community TV moniker. Um, I'm going to mention the uh, advertisers one more time because I, I want to make sure that I get them in without uh, running out of time. And I will give you their websites right now. The first one was Avalok Farm Music Institute. Uh, their program, uh, their actual website is avalokfarmmusic.org. You can go out there and see what they do. They are actually an institute, and they provide a unique opportunity for a lot of artists and ensembles at any stage of their development to develop a project in a flexible and collaborative residency. Well, you'd never know I was reading that, would you? Next up, New Hampshire's writer, the New Hampshire Writers Project. They are a group. They say that they are a welcoming community of writers for all genres and all levels, published and unpublished. They provide quality resources to develop and enhance, and enhance their craft, educate regarding publication and distribution, foster an interactive group of creative individuals in New Hampshire and beyond. And they are nhwritersproject.org. And next up is Concord Community um, TV. They're... URL is your conquered. I got this right. Your conquered TV dot org. Folks, you got to go out there and visit that website. Um, there is so much going on at Concord TV and it's all local based. Kudos to the kids over there. Kudos to the school for it. It's a beautiful, beautiful place. And last up, I'm going to hit on the Capital Center for the Arts, ccanh.org and Mother of God. You could spend a lot of time finding out what's going on at the venue over there um, in the Bank of New Hampshire um, stage where we uh, saw this Cap New Hampshire uh, opera idol going on. And, okay, so that's all of our sponsors. All right, Avalon Music Institute. They are an incredible organization. They, are play they offer residencies for artists, um, and they have an application program where you can submit. The deadline this year is December 1st. It's when it opens. It closes February 1st of 2025. Um, they really, really, really um, do an incredible job, um, and they're delighted to serve as a host for like the Composers Conference, an organization that nurtures creation, performance, and appreciation of music. They... Um, they have a oh a place where they you can record um, off season recording. Avalok they have a winter spring recording project. You can do a non residency for months there. Uh, recording residencies can be reserved. I'm telling you, it's a beautiful place. Their their facility is just gorgeous. I mean, it's really what <laughs> I was just getting started. Stop the stumbling through all that. Well, it's me and Julio down in the schoolyard. You are listening to NH Unscripted. This was Opera Idol Edition. I am your Paul Simon-like host, Ray Dudley. And we are coming to you from the operatic digs of the WKXL Studios in Concord, 1450 AM, 103.9 FM, and for the gorgeous people in Manchester, 101.9 FM down there. NHTalkRadio.com is the URL. Hey, I made it. I did it. Not exactly getting a standing ovation for it, but it is what it is. I'll see you on the next one. <laughs> <laughs>